Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and we hit 2,000 subs here on this channel which blows my mind. Thank you so much to everybody out there who watches me and has subscribed. Obviously if you're not subscribed, please do. Um, but just a massive thank you to all of you who watch my videos and like my stuff and comment on it. It is, it's awesome to have you here, it really is. And to celebrate, I wanted to do something a little bit special. So what I have in front of me is one of my first art books uh, from when I was a lot younger, somewhere between eight and 13, I think. And even back then, I was obsessed with this stuff. A like a tiny number of episodes of Robot Wars and I think a couple of BattleBots episodes kind of like snakes their way on through to mainstream Australian television and I loved them. They were so great and they were a big part of me growing up or at least the small fractions of them that I saw were uh, and I would talk about this stuff all the time and then eventually I got told, do a design. And that's what this book is. And this page in particular was, uh, yeah, my, my first ever attempt at doing this. Now this is a classic kids design. Obviously there is stuff going on everywhere, but I'll kind of walk you through it a little bit. The whole idea was based off of Tornado from Robot Wars. Uh, that was my favorite robot up until I saw Pussycat, and I believe Pussycat was after I did this design work. Uh, so it's a four-wheel drive invertible robot uh, with four weapons. We've got a spinner on the front, an ax on the back, and then lifters on the sides as well. Uh, and originally it was gonna be a saw, but then I decided that no, I needed a custom spinner that looked a little bit like this up in the top corner here, which that, let's, oh, that is just, that's an insane spinner, isn't it? It's so good. Um, yeah, so we're gonna build this today. We're going to take this design and we are going to make it a real thing. Now, I'm going to do this as a 150 gram ant weight, uh, and we're gonna have to ditch the lifters because there is no way I'm making four weapons into an ant weight. And uh, I, I will say, just, um, I will also flick this page over because I was looking at uh, names and things. So Flaming Dragon was the name that I ended up on, but not without first uh, looking through a whole bunch of names, trying to work out what I wanted to do. I also did have an attempt at engineering drawings and then just kind of gave up on that, which, you know, very kid-like. Um, so yes, we're going and doing, we're, an ant, we're doing an ant weight, uh, but I have a bit of a confession to make. This is not the first attempt at this video. Uh, the, the first attempt at this video was to make Flaming Dragon here a beetle weight. I even got so far as to get Boris running off of two of the wheels I wanted and two N20 motors. <laughs> yes! Oh, it's slow. <laughs> But that honestly is where the problems hit. Now, knowing that this st setup would work, I started doing a full on design for this thing and it was just bad. It, it wasn't haha bad in a good way. Like it wasn't, oh, this is definitely a kid's design bad. It was just bad. Everything had a hundred compromises in place. Uh, things just, weren't going to work right, they weren't going to look right, it wasn't going to be what I wanted it to be as a robot. And there's also a big part of me that wants this to be something for you guys, right? Like you guys are the reason we're doing this, you guys are the reason that this channel exists and has kept, you know, having videos on it. Because I wouldn't be continuing to push out videos screaming into a void. The fact that you guys are here is the reason these videos keep coming out. So I wanted to do something that you guys could enjoy yourselves. And yeah, like I said, the beetle build was just bad. There were so many compromises, everything would have been quite horrible. And if I was going to release the files for that, uh, you guys would never build it because there was a hundred parts in there. It was never gonna work effectively. 
uh, and it was probably going to break on the first hit every single time. Like there was no section of that robot that wasn't just going to break, basically. So I, I'm gonna switch, we're gonna switch it. We are going to an ant way. And because what I wanna do is at the end of this, I want to give you guys these files for this ant weight so that you can build your own flaming dragon. Uh, I'm not sure if you really want to or not, but you will have the option to do that. As well as all of that too though, I am going to give you guys some other little bits and pieces. So uh, stick around to the end of the video and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about those. But for right now, we, uh, we need to get some prints going and then get some stuff together and have a look at how Flaming Dragon is actually going to go together. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna put this thing together. Now there's a little bit of prep work to start with. The 3D printed chassis, I have already cleaned up uh, most of the support material that was in here, being very careful on the edges because it's very thin. Uh, now the other thing too is I actually haven't printed weapons for this. I'm gonna put this into the plastic class uh, at ARC, so the weapons are gonna be printed, but I haven't printed those yet because this thing is gonna be really close on weight. So I'm trying to work out how close we are on weight first and then I'll print my weapons second. But we need to do a little bit of prep work before we kind of start getting everything in place. So first of all, I've got these wheels uh, and these are actually printed in a flexible TP, uh, sorry, a flexible PLA. Uh, so these are going to be quite impact resistant, not that they need to be because there are side arm on here, but all of these, there's four of them, and we're just going to throw an O-ring around each of them. I think these are like 36 millimeter O-ring or something. I will have all of that information in the description down below, but all of these get an O-ring just like that. And these are all going to sit in here with gears on the N20 motor. So I'm gear driving this thing uh, out to four wheels. And to do that, we're going to need axles. Now the axles are gonna be these guys, which are plastic M3 bolts, essentially. Uh, but these things can't tap their own hole into this plastic print. That's not gonna happen. So they've got a single metal M3 here, and I'm just going to drive this into each one of the holes being very careful to make sure that I get it lined up at a 90 degree angle as I do this. Because the closer to 90 degrees I get, the better the, um, the final product will be. So the reason why we're doing it this way is basically this metal bolt is gonna cut its own threads into the plastic and then the plastic M3 bolt will be able to follow those threads. Cool, so you can see now we've got just a little bit of the bolt hanging out that side. So that M3 is now in, all those threads are now cut. So I'm just gonna cut all of the threads on the other sides as well. Okay, next step is to install the server. I'm gonna use this little jeweler's screwdriver because it should be able to pass through everything to get a screw into where it needs to for this servo to go in place. Uh, so, I'm gonna sit that down in the back here. Now, I obviously don't have the weapon attached to this and we will probably have to uh, take this out later to get the weapon into it. But for right now, all I'm trying to do is get an approximate weight for this thing so I can then print those uh, weapons, so come on, in you go. Ah, damn, I think I've just not quite got this uh, spacing right. Oh well, we're gonna just throw one screw in here and then hopefully actually remember to put the other screw in later on. This one I should be able to get at an angle. Yes, cool. Like that, and that's pretty good. That's probably not gonna go anywhere. All right, and next is the weapon motor. Once again, this is just gonna be a temporary put in because we still need to get the weapon actually printed, but that's all right, we can do that um, in a little bit. So these are eight millimeter M2 screws that I'm using at the front here because I've had to print quite a thick uh, front panel 
because this is the only thing holding the weapon in. I mean, it will only be a very small weapon, so it's something that we can live with, but at the same time, it uh, did have to be, a, well, relatively thick, just to give it a bit of strength to hold this thing together. So there we go. Okay, so it's time to get the motors in place and then the wheels and everything. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the N20s from my wiring loom, which has the receiver and everything else in it. That's just gonna make this easier to get done. Now I have printed my gears in a flexible PLA, so the D-shafts in these aren't gonna hold all that well and I'll probably need to drop a little bit of hot glue on the back of these to get them to work. Uh, so, to get these in though, all we're going to do is we are going to slide the N20 in this way and then, now if I, hopefully I can do this right, we're going to drop the gear up in here like this and then just try and force it onto the motor shaft, hopefully in the correct orientation, that is the big key part here, so there we go, I've got that in. And now that's attached to my N20, but like I said, I'm gonna need just a dob of hot glue to keep that in place because these are flexibles. So the first time you do that with a flexible material, it should work totally okay, but if you pull it off and then put it back on again, the flexible material will lose grip on the shaft and you'll need something else to keep the shaft in place. So I'm just gonna use a dob of hot glue just to keep that together. All right, so now I'm gonna get the other N20 in place and then we will actually attach these down with our little motor mounts. Two little loopy motor mounts and I've got four self-tapping plastic screws on the table here. And these literally should just go over the top of the N20 and then down into the motor mount and get screwed in place. Uh, and you need to do this so that the gear is as close to the wall as you can get it, which I have messed this up. So I'm gonna need to remove my motor mount and try again or try and wiggle it forwards a little bit. Okay, this is close to the wall as we can get it, which is gonna have to be there because these guys are now touching in the middle here. So that's gonna have to do and book into there. All right, so now it's time to throw the screws in the back, get this going. And then we can put the wheels in. So the wheels should be a lot easier. They are literally just gonna like slot in here and then have the screw come in from the outside through the center of the wheel, which should just be a little bit more than a push, or a little bit less than a push fit, and then screw down in. So we should be able to just screw this all the way through. Although that is not what's happening. So it's possible that I didn't screw this guy in well enough, but you can see here the, uh, the gear and the wheel move at the same time. I think though, yeah. I did not wait long enough before uh, trying to move that because the hot glue has released on the motor shaft. So I have to add a little bit more glue onto that in a second. Um, but I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I'll probably pull that out with a pair of pliers in a second uh, and just barrel on through onto the next wheel, I reckon. So, once again, should just be a loosish press fit, and then, hmm, these guys are not liking going in. So I guess they're just gonna stick out, which, that's not great. Maybe I'll cut these down off camera. Maybe you guys should uh, do some cutting down too. Cool, though that does seem to be working. Just, uh, yeah, the motor needs to work a little bit better. So we'll try this guy. I have a feeling though that, yeah, I didn't tap the holes 
quite far enough and now these screws just do not want to go all the way through yeah see that's that's as far as that one's going to go and let's try this one okay so that's as far as that one wants to go but this side works, so I left that side enough uh, time for the glue to dry. But we're going to dump some more glue on this other side and hope that that actually fixes the issue that I'm having here. Okay, so quick weight test, and we are at 134 grams. Okay, so I have 16 grams left for two weapons and a top plate. Ouch. So here it is. This is the weapon, and it is adorable. It is absolutely tiny because, of course, it has to fit inside the wheels that we have here and inside the body thickness that we have here, although... It, is, it does stick out a little bit top and bottom off of the, uh, off of the, the chassis, uh, but just a little bit under the wheel. So that's basically exactly where it needs to be. And because it is so, so tiny, uh, it is like a gram, basically. So I don't have to really worry about weight too much anymore. Uh, the axe is being printed now, and the axe is more like six grams. Um, so we should have enough weight left to do a top plate, especially considering that I'm going to do the top plate out of this. This is the lid off of a single-use plastic container that I got ages ago, and the container is broken, but the lid is fine. So that is going to fit nicely over there. We'll uh, make some holes in it and stuff in a minute. But first, I want to get this guy on. So I need a screwdriver. Here we go. So we'll get this, uh, this weapon on now.
Oh my God, there it is and it works. <laughs> oh man, I just, I'm, I'm really happy right now. There is a child inside me that is very, very ecstatic that we have actually built <laughs> the combat robot I designed all the way back then. And uh, it's never, it's never gonna do very well, but it is a thing that exists and I can now use. One thing I am going to do is I really, really like this kind of fluorescent uh, lime green that we've got going on with these weapons. So I'm actually gonna reprint the wheels and the gears in this same fluorescent lime green. I think uh, that's gonna help a little bit with the actual wheels themselves because they, they, don't, they don't need to be flexible. I mean, they've got wheel guards, they're going into a plastic class, they, they definitely don't need to be flexible. At the end of the day too, this came in underweight. We're uh, six whole grams underweight at the moment. I think that's mostly because the spinner weighs like basically a gram. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I could try and maybe put some more weight in the spinner, but considering the weight, uh, the space I have, that might be a little bit difficult to do, I would say. Uh, so yeah, I'll reprint those wheels in that new material. That will help especially with the um, the middle gear that's attached to the N20s because like I said, that was slipping a little bit and needed hot glue. And also these plastic uh, screws that I have as axles, I am going to cut those down so that they actually fit uh, and so that the screws don't hang out the out outside edge of the robot. But for the moment, I, I'm super, super happy with that. Now. Like I said, somewhere in the middle of this video, there's some stuff for you guys too. So this guy is going up online, uh, but also I am going to move everything that I have on Thingiverse, I'm going to move it over to my mini factory because as of late, Thingiverse has been horrible, just downright terrible. I have been having so much trouble even just trying to get on there. Uh, so we really need a better system. So I'm gonna move everything over to my mini factory. They're all still gonna be free over on my mini, my mini factory. Uh, but obviously that does open me up to doing extra designs in the future that are paid for things, which I might do, I might not. I don't really know how I feel about that yet. Uh, and this has kind of come up because uh, somebody out there or a couple of people out there have built micro dots and found that the back wall is a little bit thin and I was trying to do the update to that and that's where I realized that Thingiverse has just kind of gone really terrible right now. Uh, so there'll be uh, some updates to all of the files that I have out there already, but also I'm going to put a Facebook page link in the description now too. I'm going to start a Team Panic Facebook page and Please, 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 if you out there see any of my designs just in the wild, you see them as a Facebook post, you see them on Instagram, you see them somewhere, drop me a link. I would love to see what people are doing with my designs. I'm putting them out there for people to use, so I'm just, I'm really, really keen to see these things actually exist in the world and have people using them. Uh, so I've got a couple of uh, the guys that I fight with here in Adelaide that are doing that for me already, but I want you guys as well to do the same. So uh, the Facebook page is going to, I'll use that for kind of giving updates and kind of throwing some progress photos of um, videos as I'm kind of doing them. But I'm also really keen to have you guys talk to me through that page and especially show me when you see people build uh, my designs out in the real world because I love seeing that happen. So um, yeah, I, I just, I, I really, really do want to see more of those. Uh, and especially if you guys build yourselves a flaming dragon, please, please show me your flaming dragons because yeah, this thing is hilarious and I love it. And I really, really want to see more people build some of these. I know that because it's a plastic only uh, ant weight that it's probably not going to be all that useful to a lot of you, but Oh man, if, if even one person out there other than me makes this, I'm gonna be so, so happy. Anyway, uh, that is gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for being here and getting us up to that 2000 subscriber mark. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.